Well, Cystic Fibrosis Foundation is the best charitable foundation in the world. I mean, all you need to do is look at the, uh, not just the numbers raised, but the monies expended. And we rank consistently in the top three to four or five, usually number one in that ratio. So I think you can have comfort in knowing that when you support the foundation, you are um, supporting a very efficient organization. And as a parent, I'm especially careful when I look at those numbers that there's not a lot of fluff in them. And when we go to people who may not be as familiar with our cause as some of us are, uh, it is, it's, it's a wonderful thing to be able to say that uh, the dollars are, are working very hard. You get a lot of bang for the buck because uh, the CF Foundation has ways to use new advances. It, it is cutting short the time to getting the advances to the clinic, to the kids. For 50 years, the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation has focused unrelentingly on research and on bringing the advances in care that that research has produced to the 35,000 patients living with this disease. The results have been striking. When I was born, the life expectancy was only 15, so it's doubled in just my lifetime, which is incredible. And I'm hoping that by the time I'm 33, I'm 26 now, but by the time I'm 33, the life expectancy will be even higher. You know, the progression of my disease will stay below the progress of research. Patients with cystic fibrosis are doing things, accomplishing things that they never thought 25 years ago were going to be possible. And that's when we were still developing drugs that treat the symptoms of cystic fibrosis. Now we're developing drugs that are going to treat the causes of cystic fibrosis right at the level of the basic defect. That's because the basic defect that causes the disease is now understood in exquisite detail, down to the level of the molecule that in cystic fibrosis fails to do its job. Largely funded by the CF Foundation, this research has opened up unprecedented opportunities for fixing the defect, from replacing the molecule through gene therapy, repairing it with new drugs, or bypassing it altogether. All of those pathways are being explored, and I think in the most vigorous and creative ways that is being tried for any genetic disease at the present time. And one of those is going to work. And I couldn't tell you today uh, when that's going to be, but I can certainly tell you with a great confidence it's coming. We know enough now to sort of reshift our interests, resources, and passions to capitalizing on the knowledge that we have, translating that into betterment of health of these patients. And I think we can do it in ways that we really call disease modifying. They're not just going to make patients feel better a little bit, not going to help them through an exacerbation a little better. They're going to fundamentally change the landscape of this disease. So I'm actually very optimistic that in that wealth of information, I mean, knowledge is power here. We have a lot of knowledge now about CFTR. Are the answers, if we could just put them all together and move them on that pathway, which I know is what the foundation is putting every effort into achieving. And they've always been looking over the horizon. You know, it isn't like, well, we'll do this for a while. It's like, where are we going to be in 10 years? They are always, they are the definition of strategic planning because they're always saying, where do we need to be next? This was an organization that 25 years ago, our average grant was $12,500 a year. Uh, to think about us having, in the year 2000, made a commitment of over $42 million for a high-throughput screening project, it, it, you know, was, uh, you know, it shocked the world. But uh, the fact is, we're going to continue to invest in that technology. Technology is expensive, but I think that the dividend that the people are going to receive on their investment with us is going to be unbelievable. The high-throughput screening technology that the Foundation invested in with Vertex is just the most dramatic of the many multi-million dollar commitments that the Foundation has made with drug development companies. Today, these investments have begun to deliver with the sort of drug candidates that Vertex has already identified. The nature of this treatment, which would be a chronic treatment suitable for, for children ultimately, or young adults, requires a, a lot of upfront investment in, in making sure you've got the right molecule. 
making sure that you've got a safe molecule that, uh, that someone could take potentially for years. And that's a very expensive task. We don't want to make a mistake. Um, so it'll cost, it costs tens of millions of dollars. The CF Foundation's investments have resulted in a pipeline of potential new treatments, many now poised for the hugely expensive and perilous journey from the laboratory to the clinic. Obviously, I think we live in a very exciting time, and I'm looking forward to the future. First of all, I think there are the, the pipeline that we have already created is going to provide us with an opportunity to have a profound impact on the individuals with this disease. But more importantly, we also recognize and realize that to have a pipeline of itself is not enough. We're going to have to continue to add to this pipeline because most of the drugs that are in the pipeline will not ultimately be approved by the Food and Drug Administration. So we're going to continue to bring the best and brightest people to the CF effort. We're very fortunate to have many of them all there already. But we're going to continue to bring others to the CF effort. We're going to continue to build upon our base of knowledge that we've already been able to create. And we're going to continue to invest in new technology. I think it's going to be the combination of this, plus the commitment that we have from the patients, the families, the people that give to us, that we're going to have our ultimate success. And that's really to impact on this disease and to find an ultimate cure and control for cystic fibrosis. We have all these uh, areas of research that are going on, so many areas of promise that we can look into, and all we really need is the funding. And uh, my husband has always said, if money can solve it, it's not really a problem. And so we're hoping that uh, we have enough money that we can get to that point where it's no longer a problem, that the funding will be there, that the research can continue, and that the cure will be found. That will be a wonderful day. There has been such progress and such hope in how much and how far we've journeyed so that the quality of life, not for everybody is great, but for many of us, is good and it's getting better all the time and the care that we receive and the new trials that are in progress and the cutting research that is right on our doorstep promises that I will live into my 60s or 70 and people who are young will be able to have all that I've had and more. What more can a person ask for than that? I mean. That's, that's all that, that I would ask for for her, is, is that she can live out her dreams. So I would think that if I had a dollar to invest in a charitable endeavor, I would look to one where you can release all these suffering kids, you know, and that's going to happen. That will happen.